a plane taking group of vacationers began to shake while descending for its final approach in the heavy rain. Despite these warning sounds, the crew continued their descent. The captain applied full thrust and pulled the control column. But it was too late. Six August nineteen ninety seven Kimpo International Airport, Seoul, South Korea. An aircraft known as Queen of the Sky, Boeing 747 was on its passenger's flight to U.S. territory, Guam. On board the flight were 237 passengers and 17 crew members. The flight was under the command of Captain Park Yong-chul, 42 years old. He had an experience of close to 9,000 flight hours with 3,192 Spain on the Boeing 747. The captain had been initially scheduled flying to Dubai, but because he did not have enough rest for that trip, he was then reassigned into a shorter trip going to Guam. The first officer was named Song Kyu Ho, 40. He had an experience of more than 4,000 flight hours, including 1,560 hours on the Boeing 747. The flight engineer was Nam Su Kong, 57 years old. He was a veteran pilot with more than 13,000 hours of flying experience, including 1,573 hours on the Boeing 747. The aircraft operating was a Boeing 747-300. It was delivered new to Korean Air on December 12, 1984. The aircraft had flown 50,105 hours in 8,552 cycles. The aircraft was airborne for its destination, Guam. The captain was performing the pilot flying duties and the first officer was performing the pilot not flying duties. The aircraft was 240 nautical miles northwest of Nimi's VOR and was cruising at an altitude of 41,000 feet. The approach controller informed the crew to descend at their own discretion and maintain 2,600 feet. He also informed the crew to expect ILS runway 6L for landing.
The captain gave briefing to the first officer and flight engineer about the approach, visibility, minimum descent altitude, and go-around procedure. He mentioned that the localizer glide slope is unusable and minimum descent altitude is 560 feet. Then the co-pilot informed the approach controller that they were descending for 2,600 feet. The captain made several remarks about the crew scheduling and rest issues. He stated that if this round trip was more than a 9-hour trip, they might get a little something, but with 8 hours, they will get nothing. He also mentioned that the company made them work to maximum. This shows that he was not satisfied with the company. The approach controller informed the flight crew that the ATIS uniform was current and the altimeter setting was 29.86. This was acknowledged by the first officer. The first officer requested the radar vectors for runway 6 left. The controller instructed them to fly a heading 120 degree. After this, the flight crew performed the approach checklist and verified the radio frequency for ILS to runway 6 left. Flight 801 was descending through 2800 feet MSL with the flaps extended to 10 degrees and the landing gear up. The controller informed the flight crew that the glide slope was unusable. The aircraft was descending through 2640 feet MSL and was 9 nautical miles from the runway 6L threshold which was 5.7 nautical miles from the Nimitz VOR. As the airplane was descending through 2400 feet MSL, the first officer stated that they are approaching 1400. The captain stated that the glide slope condition was not good, so they need to maintain 1440. Then the approach controller instructed the crew to change radio frequency and contact Agana Tower Control. Agana Tower cleared the flight to intercept the localizer for runway 6 left. The Agana Tower controller cleared the flight 801 to land. The captain asked again if the glide slope is working or not. The first officer and flight engineer did not respond to this question. The runway was not visible in their sight when the airplane was descending through 1100 feet MSL. The aircraft was at a point of about 4.6 nautical miles from the runway 6L threshold and 1.3 nautical miles from the name is VOR. 500. Minimum. Think rate. The descent rate of the aircraft was 1,400 feet per minute. The control column position began increasing at a rate of about 1 degree per second.
the aircraft impacted hilly terrain at Nimiz Hill, Guam, of about 660 feet MSL and about 3.3 nautical miles runway 6L threshold with a pitch attitude of 3 degree, which killed 229 of 254 people aboard. So, what do you think causes the crash? What are the main points that could possibly prevent this accident? Let's try to find it out. Different captain was planned for this flight. This captain flying the aircraft was at first scheduled to Dubai, but the company did not allow him to do so because he did not have enough rest for that trip. This means that during the flight the captain was undeniably weary which degraded his performance and contributed to his failure to properly execute the approach. The crew used an outdated flight map where a 724 foot obstruction was missing at the Nimi's VOR. The map showed 1,300 feet in the minimum safe altitude while crossing the Nimi's VOR for a landing aircraft instead of the updated altitude of 1,440 feet. The crew knew that the glide slope was unusable, but still the captain continued descending in the false glide slope signal. The crew had sufficient information and was aware that the glide slope was unusable for vertical guidance. They should have ignored any glide slope indications while executing the non-precision localizer only approach. The first officer and the flight engineer did not challenge the captain when he was descending the aircraft below the minimum descent altitude. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause of this accident was the captain's failure to adequately brief and execute the non-precision approach. Another was the failure of the first officers and flight engineers to effectively monitor and cross-check the captain's execution of the approach. Also contributing to these failures were the captain's fatigue and Korean Air's inadequate flight crew training. Furthermore, the contributing factor to the accident was the Federal Aviation Administration's intentional inhibition of the minimum safe altitude warning system in Guam and the agency's failure to adequately manage the system. That's all for now. Click here to subscribe our channel so that you won't miss our new upcoming videos. Give a thumbs up if you are watching until now. Don't forget to share. I will see you in the next video. This is Sunil saying thank you for watching. Stay safe and healthy.